Okay. Well, this is a chat that we've wanted to do for a very long time. Uh, we're sat here in person with um, not just one of Australia's greatest ever cricketers, uh, but one of Australia's greatest ever sports people. Thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, the achievements are simply too long to list, uh, so I won't, uh, for sort of toxic masculinity reasons as well. <laughs> but suffice to say, uh, this person is a national icon, uh, a global icon, at least in the cricketing world. Um, and also, basically, she lives nearby to TJC Towers, uh, and we've sort of seen her riding a skateboard, so just asked, do you want to come to a chat? Um, and obviously, she replied, who's this? Never text me again. <laughs> um, but... Then agreed to do this for some reason. I think it could be the last chat in TGC Towers as well uh, before we move to another space. So we welcome in person, uh, arguably the greatest female cricketer of all time. I'll argue it um, to to talk to a few retired clubbies. Elise Perry, uh, Elise or Pez, welcome to the great cricketer in person. Hi guys, thanks for having me. Right, um, first off the bat, man cads, good or evil? Uh, there's no in between. <laughs> <laughs> uh, evil. How was ah. the group? How was the group chat last ah, night? It, it, it must WhatsApp, have been running. WhatsApp like must have blown that's, up. That's coming through in the WhatsApp since a couple of emojis. Uh, yeah, I. I'm not saying you got you know no one should ever read WhatsApps from the group you know uh, from friends, but we're just looking for a gist. You know what, what's the WhatsApp? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think overall gist is no good. Don't do it. But if you're going to do it, do it to England. Would be my <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, like, not bad. Uh, there's got to be some part of you that just wants to know what it feels like to be deep dish armor to <laughs> defeat yeah. England at Lords <laughs> mm. to win the game. It's very funny on a level. Yeah, on on one level. Um, and there are other levels. There's, there's, it's layered because I actually spent um, a good month or so with deep dish armor just recently in the UK. At the 100, um, we were both involved with Birmingham Phoenix. And I can honestly tell you, she is the sweetest human being on the planet. So quietly spoken, like butter wouldn't melt. And then just comes out on the field with a bit of white line fever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> some technical wow. kind of rules. And yeah, uh, it was a bit, yeah, it's always the quiet ones, isn't it? <laughs> it's always <laughs> the quiet ones. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow, okay. I like it. I um, like it. Have you guys ever had a conversation like going into a game about about maybe watch out for this, maybe mm. this team does this, maybe this yeah. team doesn't do Dean's this? Dean's a man-cad candidate. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she creeps. Keep an eye on it 72 yeah. times apparently yeah. in the game. But, yeah. Have you ever had a conversation uh, about it? No, I don't think we ever have. Uh. I think, um, you know, if someone is very obviously leading off um, before the ball's been bowled, like by a long margin, you'd probably say something to the umpire um, and you You'd probably bring that up before a game if you knew someone in Taurus who did that. But no, besides that, I don't think we've ever had a conversation about you know just chucking the man cat in. Mm. Well, you might at now. Some point. I Thank feel you. I feel it's going to be part of the game. Like I think everyone's just going to have to accept it. I for me, I don't like it, but like I just feel like this is just going to happen. This this is it now. Am I wrong? Tell me I'm wrong. I hope you're wrong. Yeah. I don't like it mm. at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It just it just doesn't feel right. It's just like the the biggest flop of a wicket. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Saying that to win the game, like <laughs> yeah. I'm probably Again, celebrating. Lords, though. So yeah, it's just yeah. it's a real, you know, it's kind of funny. <laughs> it's not simple, you know. Nah. These 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 things. Nah. I, I agree with you. I think it's interesting. I think it's sociologically interesting. Why? But why there is this? Why there seems to be an inherent, um, uh, you know, discomfort with it among huge groups of people. Going back decades and decades and decades, you know, possibly even a century, you know, and then there seems to be another side that sort of dismisses it and just says, it's in the laws and therefore it's permissible. There's nothing else that needs to be discussed. And yet this feeling still pervades, I think there are cultural layers to it. And I think it's, I think everyone's view is worthy of uh, kind of respect and working through it. I don't think there's one view on it that's, you know, that permits somebody just to wave away or dismiss everything else like i think the discomfort comes from somewhere and i i think this is going to continue to happen i also think that next time you play india you know if sharm <laughs> is coming in deep is coming in a bowl why don't you and i just said this on the yeah. show the other day you know if you're at the non-strikers end you've got an opportunity to, to to mess with her processes too why don't you step out of the crease and then just sort of in and out yeah. in and out as she's coming into bowl maybe she starts bowling two lengths you know, Moons is the other end, bang. There's a couple. You know what I mean? There's runs. I mean, we're talking about pragmatic cricket. Yeah. I don't know. If everyone's looking for their little edges out, I don't know. Yeah. I do like a bit of a balk. 
Yeah, yeah, bork, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, borking. Yeah. I don't mind that. That's a bit of a combat. Yeah. To the man cat. Exactly. Yep. So you know what they should do though. Exactly. Your eyes have lit up at yeah. that idea. <laughs> if you do man cad and they're in their crease, I think it's no ball. Like it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Other free, way. Free hit. hit. And yeah. Free yeah. hit. And free hit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so this, oh, is, this, this is this so is a game it. within a game. Yeah. Squid games. <laughs> okay. Not as good. <laughs> not, as, not, as, yeah. not as good season two, if I'm honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pops mad cats and balking, yeah. Uh, for the benefit of those on YouTube who have already typed into the comments um, that it's called a run out at the non-striker's end, we're aware of that. I think the term man cad is uh, just the, the, um, the lexicon that kind of describes the phenomenon we're talking about at the moment. And any any you know proponent of it should enjoy that. It's We're using it as a it. moniker. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, all right, Elise. <laughs> just let's. I didn't know if you wanted to talk about that at all, because uh, the headlines are now going to say Perry calls it evil. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm going to have a chance to have a say over what we talk about today. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm just diving right in uh, here. I, I don't know. I got a <laughs> feeling. I'm actually handcuffed under, <laughs> <laughs> under the table here. <laughs> I told you not to mention that. Uh, well, <laughs> um, that'll be out of that. Yeah, yep. yep. I won't make it. Yep. <laughs> where, do, where do we? Uh, where do we catch you in your schedule now? I notice uh, you, you're playing with Victoria. WNCL's on. Um, the Aussies don't play for a little while. Mm -hmm. So, is it? Do you consider this downtime, or <laughs> are, are you just nets deluxe at oh. Junction Oval? Uh, I notice you're bowling. How they're coming out? Yeah, um, nice summer year. A little bit. Although a little bit dicey in terms of what you're going to get weather-wise. So some days you turn up in spring, especially September, lovely sunny day, nets are looking good, we've had a bit of bit of warm weather, they're nice and hard, get me in there. Other days, rainy, cold, wet nets, I don't want to be there mm. kind of vibe. So September's a bit interesting around that, but we are playing quite a few games, which is really nice. We started WNCL, we've got another round next uh, at the end of September against Tasmania. And then into Big Bash, um, start of October. So okay, uh, and I have to say, like, like we're three Sydney siders sitting here, like Sydney being home, but we're all here in Melbourne, Victoria. Like, how I don't want to do tedious like Sydney v Melbourne stuff, but like, how's how's Melbourne for you? I got to say, like, as a cricket fan, I still I don't like that you're playing for Victoria. Um, I respect what you need to do professionally, uh, etc. Et but like, how you, how you finding playing for the Vicks, and how and uh, are you liking Melbourne? Where is it for you? Interesting that you mentioned that. It sounds like a similar line of conversation that I had with my parents on the weekend when they came to watch. <laughs> Some might think I am your parent, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Probably sister, but yeah. Um, yeah, they came over to Adelaide to watch us play South Australia and and Dad happened to make a, a comment that um, the navy blue looked nice and then Mum chimed in with, and yes, New South Wales is also blue. Um, <laughs> yeah. so, so parents haven't, ex parents haven't <laughs> accepted it. Yeah. They, yeah, they're getting there. They both rocked up in green clothing for the weekend, so they were neutral. Okay. Um, normally, <laughs> when I used to play for New South Wales, they would always wear baby blue. Yeah. To the ground, matching. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, there's just some <laughs> subtle <laughs> subtle uh, hints there. But, um, no, I, I'm really enjoying Melbourne life. Um, I think this is my third or fourth year down here now. Uh -huh. um, obviously, a little bit impacted over the last couple of years. But um, besides that, it's been been great. I'm pretty sure you've moved down here to ride your skateboard because I can't Absolutely. see that happening in <laughs> Sydney. So I want to know if you're allowed like to hills, do that. that yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Are you allowed to do that in your contract to ride a skateboard? Because we've learned some of the weird things recently that other professional athletes, not just cricketers, like aren't allowed to do because it's in their contract. Like it's deemed as too dangerous. Like go to theme parks, that sort of thing. <clears throat> yeah. Um. <laughs> Are you allowed to write a skateboard in uh, your no, contract? No comment. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 yeah. Okay. I might just um, have a chat to my lawyers, actually. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we call it a bike, uh, you know, it's yeah. with four wheels and yeah. you're just standing up. It's a motor transport. I sure, motor transport. Yeah, you essentially got the tram in. here. Mm. I did. Yeah, yeah. really small yeah. tram. Yeah. Personal. Tiny tram. Yeah. <laughs> Individual tram. At least, like, wanted to. Um, are there anyone who's tuned into this chat who's sort of looking for like the latest issues in women's cricket and stuff is going to be disappointed. Um, <laughs> th there'll be a few, but like, I, I wanted to go from the start with you a little bit um, because, uh, like, you, you must have had countless chats with various media outlets about your story. You know, the Elise Perry story, and like every time I've gone to research you for various conversations that we've had, like. 
and this happens with every other elite sports person, is like the biography is always, you know, say with you, it's like, you know, she was talented and the only girl in her first soccer and cricket team, like the Beecroft and Oakhill respectively. And then when she was 16, she played for Australia in both. And I'm like, why does the mainstream media continue to ignore grassroots sport that happens in between? You know, like this is the place where people get chiseled out. They they find that they're better than everybody else. And I, I wanted to ask you, like, for most people, they were sort of going through club sport, 15, 16, 17. Maybe there was, a, you know, a career for them. By 16, you were playing for Australia in two sports. So I'm thinking, like, was it, you know, was it in year seven or something when we're all just hormonal that you're like, oh, I'm actually on here. I'm three three years away from my international debut. You know, when did you know it's just this is this is going to happen? Um, <laughs> oh, dear. I actually had no idea. Um, what, until, like, you just got a call? Until I got a call. And <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what are you talking about? How does that about? work? What are you talking about? Well, you must have dominated yeah. this club. Come on. Sport. Uh, I think I think I you know like most athletes at some point in their career timing's good um, and they just like sort of call it luck call it timing whatever um, it sort of just panned out that right around when I was sixteen I played a few you know sort of representative carnivals um, played in some underage Australian um, matches and r- around that time they had a couple of retirees from the Australian women's team um, notably Catherine. Fitzpatrick, um, one of the greatest ever fast bowlers, um, had a couple of injuries and I think they just decided to go a bit rogue and pluck a 16-year-old out of you know, junior cricket who was – I'd had a bit of a growth spurt so I was starting to bowl a bit more and a little bit quicker and for whatever reason, the, um, Christina Matthews, who was the head selector at the time, um, could have been on a, a night out when she made that decision or <laughs> just <laughs> not quite thinking. Always selects better after a couple <laughs> yeah, of beers. Yeah. It's like yeah. playing yeah. pool, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. Just select teams, yeah. yeah. Um, and it just, yeah, it honestly came from nowhere. So much so that I don't reckon half the girls in the team even knew who I was um, when I turned up to the first training. So it, w- it was a genuine sort of just potluck timing. Nice to be around at that, that point in time. Because I was in Southampton, wasn't it? Your first, your first game. You flew over to England for it. Your first, was that your first tour? Um, your f- Darwin first game. Darwin first Darwin game. First yeah. Okay, yeah. I always mix that up. Yeah, Southampton yeah, yeah. and the Darwin. Yeah. Similar climates. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. A couple of jumpers up there in Darwin. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. So you, okay, you come into that team and people don't know your name. You walk into that dressing room yeah. and you know everyone, I presume. Yeah. You know all the names. Yeah, I think so. Well, I think the first first bit of interaction was actually on the flight. So um, we all flew to Brisbane and then caught a connecting flight across to Darwin. And I remember being that like shy and nervous that I just pretended to be asleep on the flight the entire way so I didn't have to speak to anyone. Oh. <laughs> I just didn't know people like at all and probably thought they were thinking, what is this kid doing here? How old are you? Um, You're 16 at the time. 16, 16 yeah. yeah. So um, got, got, to the, got to the hotel and sort of first training session, it was kind of like introduce myself, right arm over please or... I'll bold you in the nets if that's okay. And I don't know, I kind of went from there. You know, there, there are so many stories, like, uh, it's like mythological from, and I want to ask you later about comparing things to men's career, by the way, but like, <laughs> this is our frame of reference <clears throat> about like alpha hierarchies and and when the young buck joins the side, you know, the, the tradition is that they're essentially like neutered and, and made to feel <laughs> that they're the lowest uh, because it's a competitive little pyramid that you're in and you have to work your way up through like unwritten social conventions, you know, like yeah. drinking and stories and things like that. Like, is there, is there anything, w- did you experience anything similar like that? Did you feel welcome in the side? Did you, did you get a sense that uh, people thought, because you, you did skip a fair few levels to get to that team and we know how, you know, the drudgery of club and f- maybe not first class cricket, it's still pretty good, but like, d- did, you know, what was that experience like, you know, being introduced or other, others welcoming you into the team? Yeah. Um, I was so lucky. I think um, maybe this is a little bit different between men and women, but I think um, women become quite, like, maternalistic. So there was a lot of comments around me being young enough to be some of the senior players' daughter um, <laughs> in the team and sort of stuff like that. So it was almost a bit of reverse where I – Seemed to get really well looked after and oh um, nice yeah it was it was proper cool I'm very very fortunate must be nice that is that is yeah, the least like I, that's the most foreign experience of yeah. it. like I never <laughs> played a game and I was like yeah. dad daddy <laughs> I'd love to go into a cricket team when my mum's there <laughs> <laughs> like, 
That would be so nice, wouldn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. You're on next, darling. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Can I Get out. Now? Can I have a cuddle? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, did I trivialise that? I don't mean to. Like, but, but people were looking after you, saying. Yeah, they really were, actually. Um, and I think, you know, I, I sort of knew a few few of the um, the girls, especially the ones from New South Wales, so it was kind of nice to have a little bit of a link there. But but then everyone was just super cool. And I actually found, especially at that age, there is zero expectation of you as a 16-year-old. Like, you're learning the ropes. Um, and it wasn't – it was almost like it, I could just – do whatever it could be a bit of a child and it was completely fine and, and everyone was like really happy to kind of have this novelty of a 16 year old with probably a bit more energy and excitement so it was um it was great so when did you play your first club game after that so i guess, so I guess you were playing club cricket and then you went into australia and then how long after that did you play another club game I think I was week and a half ago. Never again. <laughs> yeah, never again. Yeah. Why would I play club cricket yeah, again? Yeah, what's that? <laughs> I actually think at that point in time or close to it um I was at Sydney Cricket Club, used to be Balmain Cricket mm-hmm. Club, and we'd formed a, like a third grade side with a lot of the younger players. So Elisa Healy and I were in that team and we had her, 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 dad, her, dad, her dad, Greg, sort of looked after the oh, group. Yeah. And I reckon like half the time we were playing on Syntho on the on the weekend. Um, so it was like, it was really kind of weird the, the difference between the two, but also yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. How'd you hit him again in threes? Yeah. On uh, syntho. Yeah. Against 12 year olds. <laughs> no, so <laughs> we played like, age. we actually played like a lot of older women who right. probably been done the journey for quite a while and, and had dropped back down to third. So it was always kind of a weird um, dichotomy when, when you turn up on the weekend. But, yes. Um, mm. I reckon I got out for less than 10 most times, just t- way too impatient. Mm. So we, we, we talked to a lot of your teammates <laughs> a few weeks ago um, with Channel 7 and asked this question of like, what's it like to go back and destroy like hapless mm. Uh, mm. teenagers in grade cricket? And there's like two answers. One, one is like, no, I always get really nervous and I don't play well at that level. And then the other one is like, it's fantastic. And, I, <laughs> and, we, and it's really satisfying to like sometimes make girls cry <laughs> so it just takes all types you know i guess yeah i think um we're ignoring that like as you join the australian national team that we're basically in code wars over your mm. uh participation because simultaneously um what are we what are you saying here like the, the 2011 world cup in germany football is that around where your, your debut is a little bit earlier than that is it in cricket or is it around the same time um oh Maybe a couple of years earlier. Okay. Yeah. I want to go to the 2011 World Cup in Germany because you, you, you're you also playing for the Matildas and you uh, are playing, you know, it was Canberra and then Sydney FC, right? 2011 World Cup in Germany. And what people remember from that is the quarterfinals against Sweden. You score a sensational goal. You can still see it. Uh, it, it and it's a great goal. Outside the box, defender closing in, left peg, um, curling shot, top bins. Um, Craig Foster says it's it's one of the best ever goals in Australia's World Cup history. Um, but we go down 3-1. <laughs> and, you know, as a, as a 37-year-old um, man who played all-age fifth grade uh, in, in the Canterbury District Comp um, for Burwood Strikers 12 years ago, there's some defending I want to discuss from that game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you could have got a little closer to Shetland. Uh, for that. <laughs> <laughs> for that first goal and, 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 and you could have shown Shrogan the byline a bit more, I think, as well, um, before she crossed in for the second. So so on a day where you scored a worldie um, in a World Cup, I just want to know, like, do you have nightmares about that day? Yeah, I'm minus one on the score sheet. It's <laughs> <laughs> a disrespectful question. And, and I thought, what's the angle for this, for this goal? Goal in a losing yeah. side? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll probably stop you there too and say I was trying to cross the ball. So. <gasps> oh, fuck. I well, can't believe you both. Really? Yeah. Okay. So you're trying to you're trying to dink it. Really? Yeah, Why have you said that? Just... Are you on record saying that? Is that the first time you've said that? <laughs> no, I actually don't know what I was doing. I just kind of <laughs> <laughs> so must be just... difficult when you don't know what you're doing yeah, and it's yeah, just yeah. top bins. Well, World Cup, I guess. <laughs> Germany, you're having a good time. But you are you are absolutely correct. There was a few horrific defending errors down that right side prior to that, and I actually remember the ball going in when I shot crossed it, and a couple of the girls running over, and I was like. Yeah, still got one more to get to make up for it. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got taken off. Um, but <laughs> you know, but that's no. one of the things people just remember. It was just an unbelievable goal. Nah. 
Yeah, it was a great experience. It was, a, yeah, a really, really cool experience. And um, it would have been lovely to, to win that match. But I, th- I think it was probably actually um, around that time in terms of women's sport and, and where things were at. That was probably the biggest experience I'd had at a, a tournament with crowds. And, you know, obviously Germany's football mad. So I think at that uh, quarter final we had about 36,000 people there. And yeah. that was pretty consistent across the, the comp. And it was really nice to know, like... That could be the future of, of women's sport a bit. Um, so, yeah, um, it was great. Um, yeah, but thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not me. It's just a thing I have to do. It's just, it's just, it's just a character. It's just a character. It, it, it's yeah. a bit of a shit sandwich, you know. Like, it's a, it's a great goal. I just have to say those things. Right. I appreciate your honesty. <laughs> and, like, just talking about, like, big tournaments that you have played in, that might have been your first in nine years. Is that 2011? Yeah. 2011. So nine years later, then there's the 2020 World Cup. In Australia, right? The one just before COVID when Australia win. And um, just in my experience of the women's cricket team, that that made everyone on that team so famous. I think I met some of the team beforehand. I didn't really have a connection to them. I didn't really know some of their names even, you know? And then after that, all you guys are now, I think, like some of the most famous athletes in Australia. Maybe that's just perception through my job. But but um, I think it was last week. I don't know if you know who Steph Houghton is, but she's the captain of the Lionesses, the, the England's women's football team, who just won the Euros last year. <clears throat> she's like over 100 caps. She's been captain since like 2014. And she, she ruptured her Achilles like last year. And then it was like a race against time if she was going to be fit for the Euros, which was obviously at home. And then they win. You know, it's an enormous achievement. And she was talking last week about how difficult it was for her to even watch the, the games because it meant, meant so much to her. She couldn't watch the games. You know, she was obviously cheering for the team. She was texting players beforehand, but she found it so difficult to um, even engage in the in the Euros when they ended up winning, you know. And I was just wondering your experience of that because you did your hamstring in the tournament, right, and then you didn't get to play the final. And that final was just such a huge occasion for women's sport and the cricket team and everything. And you didn't get to be part – I mean, you were part of it in the sense that you were there and – you definitely circuited afterwards, um, <laughs> <laughs> but like, but but how was that experience for you in in relation to all that? Um, yeah, I mean, I think there was this overall sense with that final that it was almost um, a lot of a bigger occasion than than just the match, um, just because of like the enormity of of where it sort of ended up with the crowd being um, you know so big, and then like so many people there that have been involved in the game for such a long period of time and contributed at different steps along along the way um so yeah I mean it would have been amazing to to play the game but I think just being there and taking in that whole occasion and you know even just getting to stand out on the ground for the national anthem and and sort of have a look around at this full MCG which you know we'd never experienced before um and then the way the girls played it was just like this ma- massive celebration mm-hmm. for for the sport um, and particularly for our team. Um, so I think, yeah, in a lot of ways it kind of – that it didn't really feel like a game of cricket. It just felt like this occasion to be a part of and it didn't matter what you were doing as um, on that day. Like even just having some of the former captains like Belinda Clark and Karen Rolton and Lisa Stalaker there, um, I think they all felt like they were almost completely involved in it as well from like – as close as you could to be to playing it. Mm. It was sort of like there was just this special connection with that match that everyone had. So, um, yeah, that, that was really cool. But, um, yeah, I did, I did circuit at the end. And apparently, <laughs> actually, one of, one of the highlights of that <laughs> is that apparently I'm a better dancer with only one leg right. versus having two legs, which uh-huh. is, says something about my dancing. But everyone was quite impressed. <laughs> <laughs> You're way better with a torn hamstring. <laughs> that yeah. was the comment, literally. Yeah. That was good feedback then. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Can always rely on that with the girls. <laughs> <laughs> that, whole, that whole tournament must have been – I'd sort of forgotten that the build-up to it, even before it started, was like, let's pack the MCG. Let's try and get 100,000 people there and Katy Perry was going to perform. And it's just like every game before the final must have just been like you were thinking about the final. So It's, it's incredible. It's incredible. And also it, it does sort of – I don't know if I'm conflating things with it, but given it was like about two weeks later, the whole of the world's in lockdown. Yeah, it's it, it's a remarkable achievement what the what the girls did. Yeah, it was it was incredible. I think um, yeah, there was lots of bumps along the way. Um, mm. A lot of the round matches we didn't play that well. Sort of scraped through a few games. We also lost the first game to India um, mm-hmm. at the showgrounds in Sydney. So it was it was a bit of a rocky tournament for us. We had yeah. a couple of big injuries throughout for for different players and. 
And then it was almost like we managed to get over the line and get into the final after the semi final being this crazy rain affected match that if it hadn't have gone ahead we wouldn't have qualified for the final. So um once we got there it was like, oh this is gonna be a bit of a piece of piss because we're actually here now. The whole thing has been <laughs> like this struggle to get to get there. Yeah. Um, so it was almost like just a bit of a celebration of the team yeah. and all the pressure was off and we could just go out and, and play. But I remember after that, um Someone saying that there was like a COVID case at the game, and we were all like, "Oh my gosh, like COVID! It's um, one case at, at, at the game." Um, yeah. And then you kind of see what happened. And it's like we were so lucky to get that in. Well, then two years later, there's, there's someone in the team with COVID. So then we're yeah. just cracking on. So <laughs> yes. no problem. <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. Really no issue. As long as she doesn't celebrate. Yeah, you know, yeah. Stay, stay over there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, wear a mask. Sit over there. Yeah. <laughs> change <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like um and uh, like i agree like that that game and and winning the tournament in that manner at the mcg felt like a, a real crowning moment for all this investment and hard work that had gone into australian women's cricket over decades and it was real you know standing on the the shoulders of giants stuff and then COVID happened pretty much straight after that and everything was affected like do, do you feel like um it's probably too broad a question but like you know has has women's cricket in Australia and then beyond um, captured the momentum, do you think, from that uh, tournament? Because you know how World Cups always do that. You know, we talk about that in football. Uh, has, it, has it captured the momentum from the World <laughs> Cup? Like as though yeah. you put it in a bottle and then just sprinkle it forever and, and yeah. it will continue to bloom. Do you, do you think it's, it's going well? Um, uh, yeah, I do think it's going really well. Um, I don't know. I probably think that momentum dissipated pretty quickly. Um, but... Not in a bad way. Um, I think in, in some ways in a good way because it sort of still showed um, that underneath like a lot of the great progress, there's just some really um, important stuff that still needs to keep happening. And a lot of that is probably more like around across the world in terms of some of the developing nations and, and where they sit and the support that they need versus, you know, countries like England and India and Australia who are sort of forging ahead. It's like really important to make sure that we keep supporting those other nations. And um, I think COVID really highlighted that because obviously, you know, people had to, organisations had to pare back so much of their funding and, and support and what they were doing for, for teams. And in a lot of cases, I think some of the women's teams suffered the most there. So um, I think that actually brought to the fore some of the things that we need to keep doing to make sure that like the foundations are really solid across across the world with, with women's cricket. But um, for us, I think, yeah, I mean... It's continued to grow, which is great, um, and it's been yeah, it's been so cool to be a part of it. Can I ask? I mean, uh, you, you speak about that kind of thing with a lot of it seems to me like a lot of certitude and authority, and you've obviously been around the block, um, so to speak, a lot when it comes to sport. And you are you are rolled out as a as a um, I will, I'll come to like marketing later and stuff, but like people attach themselves to you just as we're doing today. Uh, but um, <laughs> is is when it comes to the question of like the growth of women's sport or the foundations of women's sport, do you see yourself as someone who wants to, um, you know, with strident views on that, who wants to contribute to, to that space after your career or have you, or do you consider yourself more of a, of a player just experiencing it? Oh, um. So I guess what I'm asking <laughs> is like, do you see yourself going into this space later on, you know, <laughs> and, and, um, and, and trying to influence? Um, uh, not, I haven't, not especially, I haven't really thought about it a lot, um, in that sense. I think like just as being a, like a bit of a, excuse the jargon, but like a citizen of the game and like in a lot of cases at the moment, it feels like the easiest way to influence things as a, as a team is just to keep like, um, hopefully performing and, and playing well and capturing people's imaginations so that they want to watch the sport, they want to be involved in it. Uh, people want to broadcast it and talk about it and all those kinds of things. And I think, like, ultimately that's the most tangible thing that you can you can do um, and it's probably what motivates and excites me the most. But um, there is, like, so much off the field from an administration point of view that, that gets done and gets thought about and, you know, continues to kind of change and evolve as the sport's getting bigger, which is really cool. So this is my really political answer back to you to say, I've got no idea what I want to do, oh, yeah. I guess, after, but... Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a it's a cool space to be in. I think not just in cricket, but it's like there's so many female sports now that are sort of, you know, 
trying to jump on that momentum and really grow that side of the game. So um, I think there's so many opportunities in women's sport at the moment to be involved. There wouldn't be much chat about the IPL at the moment. Probably not much <laughs> discussion at all in the, the shares. Don't talk about it very nah, much. Nah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely not crypto or the IPL. <laughs> yeah. no, no chat about that. Yeah. So uh, I am so glad that women's cricket has somehow avoided the whole crypto thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it hasn't yeah. become a thing in, yeah. in the change rooms yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, but the it's IPL, there's a bit of chat. Yeah, it's yeah. Cool. What is what is the chat? What, what is the chat specifically? Well, I don't, we actually don't know much about it just yeah. yet. So whether there'll be an auction or or not, that could be very intriguing if there is an auction. Um, At least you're honest about that. We ask a lot of the blokes and they're, they're like, oh, I don't watch the auction. I don't really watch the auction. Yeah, yeah, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, be on all five of their televisions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the so if you guys don't talk about crypto, what is the what is the chat during the dressing room during during, during giant lunch breaks, tea times, innings breaks? How do you answer that? What's the what, what, like, what do you guys yeah. do? Well, it's just so what do women talk about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what do women want? Yeah. Well, Mel Gibson, <laughs> I already know because I can hear your thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> At least what could the great <laughs> What do, do women do want? Yeah, <laughs> I don't understand. It's a really Sorry. beautiful two pound seven bat with yeah. a nice pickup. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so it's not crypto. Yeah. We can we can yeah. It's not crypto. Out. It's not crypto. Uh, there is a lot of food chat. Yeah. Food. Yeah. yeah. Preferences. Yeah. Well, food is yeah. big. It's a big topic. Mm. It goes around a lot. The amount of times that I've covered the impact on pineapple sometimes <laughs> when on your tongue. Oh my god, we need to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm silly. I'm silly in the moment. <laughs> I can't save that. That's okay. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I can't, I can't save that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we talk a lot about food. Yeah, food. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, where, where else you'd rather be if you weren't at cricket? Normally. Mm. That yeah. Up. Yeah. 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 We We're like you're sitting in the change rooms. Like, where else would you guys rather be? Yeah. yeah. Any, anywhere. Yeah. We had that as yeah. well. We had yeah. The, yeah, back in the day. Yeah. I could be anywhere right now, but I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, one of the ones I like the best is who who has the nicest ponytail. Oh, okay. ponytail. Yeah. What, and what what makes first a good 11. ponytail? Yeah. Ponytail lots first eleven, I like it. Ponytail first eleven, lots of things. I think um, length, like you don't want it too short, don't want it too long. Yep. A nice like glossy sheen, so it looks healthy. Ah, okay. yeah. Yeah. Um, straight. Mm-hmm. Someone's put a bit of attention into that in the morning and made sure that they've they've got the straightening tongs out. Okay. And then just like where it sits on the head. How it looks. How it comes so out the cap? The hat, the how it comes yeah. out uh, the cap? Yeah. stylistic where it sits on the head? Like as, as in people would have different like aesthetics that they like? Higher on the head, lower? Definitely. Yeah. The high, yeah, high pony. The high pony. High yeah. pony. You are limited a little bit by the... the of course. Whole, yeah. And then also like hair tie choice. Oh, yeah. Or you're going scrunchy. Yeah. Adding a ribbon. Those kinds of things. And is there ribbing around that in the sheds as well? It's just like... Ponytail's out of whack today. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to get a sense. <laughs> Bitcoin down, ponytail yeah, out. That's no, right. That's right. Wash your hair last yeah, that's night. Right. <laughs> didn't, feel like, didn't feel like straightening for us today? Yeah. Ooh, did you have a lion? <laughs> yeah, did you have a lion? I like it. Oh, that's good. Uh, do you, uh, like, uh, it's, it's fu- you know, it's funny conceiving of, of questions for today. Uh, it's so, um, I've, I find it so, um, like such a reflex to think of questions in reference to men's cricket and but but being very conscious that uh it's it's probably quite a faux pas to continually like put women's cricket in men's terms or through a men's like through a men's prism is that would could you confirm that as the greatest of all time that like it's really not um it's really not cool to like make comparisons between like men's and women's cricket when trying to talk about someone's career? <laughs> oh, um, yeah, I think, I think in some ways, um, yeah, those comparisons can be a little un- unhelpful in the sense of it probably doesn't like, um, acknowledge that like the game is its own game. Mm. Um, and 
hopefully, you know, the more and, and like that's also I think impacted by the fact that it hasn't been particularly visible in the last um, fifteen or so years. But you know, obviously in the last little bit, it's that's really changed. And and as you said before, he go like everyone get has get has got to know the girls really well now and understands how they play and their different nuances um, and just how the whole game is is played as well. Um, whereas I think you know in, in the past it was actually really flattering to be compared to to the guys because. It gave people a sense of understanding of of how that player might play, um, but also probably with a little bit of um, choice of better word, a little bit of ignorance because just hadn't had a chance to watch a lot of it or get a feel for it. So, I think the further that we've come, I've noticed like those comparisons are really died off a lot. Um, it doesn't seem to happen as much, um, but there are also also some great spaces where you can compare things and, and what goes on. So it's kind of like. I know, it just depends in what context. Would would you literally playing um, like in the under twenty one men's comp, Port of and Gray, be a good choice of conversation? Because I'd like to ask you a question about it. <laughs> <laughs> What's that question? Oh, it's a nice question. Well, uh, uh, so so you you're at Balmain or Sydney, which is like uh, I played for that club too. I played for your club, um, <laughs> and you played. Yeah, you, you, you played in the under-21s comp uh, and a mate of mine um, claims to have organised this. Sorry, Borley, I'm not sure he's right. but <laughs> Borley. Yeah, <laughs> Borley. Um, and it, but, he, but he said you were just a class act from start to finish and uh, he, oh. he, he said there was a training beforehand, you turned up and he said the word he'd used was, was poised. You just poised the whole time and then on the day you played in this game, um, you, you took Tufa, you littered a bloke or sat him, or sat mm. him down uh, and then you batted, you batted three, and just knocked it round at, for a win. And I guess my question is, like, what do you remember from that day? And I know all the guys in that PG side are good guys. I know a lot of them, but I also know there's some idiots there as well. So who said the worst thing uh, on the day, <laughs> <laughs> and who, who dealt with it in the worst way? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jeez, I don't. Yeah, I and then, and if you don't remember, that's the greatest answer to that as well. Oh. Just another game. Yeah. <laughs> two, I don't two, remember two, any of those. Two, few runs, a little bloke. Yeah. What's next? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was actually really lucky because um, a guy who I grew up playing club cricket with as a kid at Oak Hill College, um, Nathan Breen, was in the oh, side yeah, and Nathan, he's yeah. like one of my best mates um, ever. So I feel like um, he probably filtered a lot for me and, and put on the sort of protective friend um, mask. So... <laughs> I don't remember a lot of it, uh, but it was really it was really good fun. The change room circumstance was pretty interesting. Um, I don't think I was in there at all, which is – and I, I feel like the boys were a little bit like not sure what was going on a lot of the time, but um, it was a really cool experience. I think we won too, which was kind of yes. kind of nice from memory. But, um, it was Blacktown. I don't think they were very strong that year. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I should remember. No, that's, I, I think that's the perfect answer as well. I don't really remember. Um, but, it, I mean, seriously, you've, you've, won, you've won everything. You've won individual awards. You've won every tournament I think it's, that is, is possible to win. Uh, and, like, b- beyond the fame and adulation, like, it's always seemed to me that you've, like, innately got a sports person's mind, um, driven for success, process-focused. Um, so I just want to ask a sports question, like, what is the best – innings you've played or what's the innings you're most proud of with bat and ball? Oh. <laughs> You've seen Willard's at PG's batting three. <laughs> no, <it's not>. I <laughs> prefer you talk words, about... I just knocked him around a bit, a bit, which is pretty much what I've done my whole career. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you take that as a sled? <laughs> I mean, I think it's it's only point. made 120. It's okay. <laughs> That's a sore point. Strike rate's a big conversation for me. <laughs> 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 oh, you think yeah. I just knocked him around, did you actually? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got 200 against England. Yeah, in the yeah. I just got knocked yeah. around that well, day. Well, I want to talk about that yeah. in a second. But yeah. Yeah, it went early there that day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I don't know. Um, so many to choose from. No, <laughs> no I don't, <laughs> Again, really, I I don't mean it like that at all. It's <laughs> like, um, I think maybe like, oh, just when you've been involved in games where um, they've been really like awesome wins. That probably, and you've sort of contributed at some point under pressure or, um, yeah, in, a, in an important part of the game there, like the most satisfying for sure. Um, but you often don't rem- really remember 
how many you made or, or what. It's more just the feeling of kind of being in control when there's lots of pressure on. Um, so yeah. Is there one? Is there one particular game that where you felt you really delivered there? Um, maybe there's bowling innings in. Uh, I think it was a 2013 World Cup final. And we're playing uh, the West Indies over in India, and I um, I actually had a stress fracture in my ankle, and we didn't really know about it. But I just my ankle had been sore, and we ended up jabbing it for that game. And then I think something sort of happened as I was running into bowl of first ball, and it just felt really wrong. Um, and I was a bit worried, like because they'd probably made a bit of a gamble to select me in that match in terms of fitness, and I was a bit worried that I wasn't going to be able to bowl, and that would have left us pretty short in the bowling department, and. For whatever reason, I think it actually, after I sort of figured out how to run in with my ankle feeling a bit funny, um, I actually was probably the best I've ever bowled, like technically and, and sort of in terms of the outcome um, down the other end. So, yeah, for whatever reason, that uh, I wish I'd break my ankle more often because <laughs> it makes me a better Because you could, you could barely walk, right? You, you, took, you took three for 19, I know because I looked it up before, but, um, and that's like, that's sort of, or in your... Um, bio it's sort of listed as like one of the greatest achievements in your career thus far i should say but um it says like you know you couldn't walk basically and you took three for 19 you've been quite humble about that it's pretty it's pretty good oh. pretty good <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, world cup I final know. i think yeah, it's funny what um adge- adrenaline and sort of like yeah. those circumstances do that was a really cool kind of experience in that way because um yeah the next day i was pretty pretty rough trying to get out of bed and go to the toilet <laughs> yeah <laughs> but like yeah that 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 day for whatever reason it was just like it was cool to get through it and and to actually like bowl well um as i said probably like the best i've ever bowled technically in, in terms of like swinging the ball and, and just how how i got through the crease which is bizarre but it kind of panned out that way so that was that was kind of cool du- double ton in the test uh under, under lights at north sydney where does that rate Absolute road of a wicket. I was going to say <laughs> it was was a bit flat, wasn't it? Yeah, it, was it can be like that in North Sydney. There's often double tons yeah. in the offing there. <laughs> yes, short boundaries. Yeah, um. yeah I know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. That sounds no, no, fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. There's another ground up the road. <laughs> it's not the main one. No. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> I feel like I've missed something here. No, 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 it's, it's all good. There's, there's two it's Perrys in this room that score it's double yeah, times. It's, it's not and North Sydney Oval. It's, it's not a my cricket. Yeah. yeah. It's not a new. Oh. Yeah. yeah. We good. need to fix that. I think my cricket's out of action now. It'd be now, really nice to like celebrate that. I think I've said enough. Um, <laughs> I, I can't believe I've never heard of this. Well, I'm happy to go I've tried to drop a hint a few times. <laughs> <laughs> I've finally picked up on That's it. Right. You, you might think I'm talking about you scoring a double ton in the ashes. Yeah. No, 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 no. no I can't. Black, I can't have Black, that. Blacktown again, yeah. Yeah, Blacktown. Because <laughs> um, Black you had you had stressies. That's why you missed the com games as well, right? In your where were your stressies this time? Uh, in my back. In your back. Yeah. So you've had stress fractures in your ankle, your back, brittle bones. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a badge of honor though, isn't it? Like you, you have to buy mm. you have to buy wheels to. To have stress, yeah, stress to yeah. get to even get stressy, like really fast, they're gonna be coming well, up pretty quick. Buck that trend. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like you were or well, were yeah. okay. I'm oh. sledging now. Yeah, you, oh, you, yeah. you used to be. She can say you it, used yeah. to be in your peak. Yeah, you used to be quick. I feel I feel that's true. Yeah. I feel like you, you feel like you were sharp. Yeah, maybe. It's, yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I don't think I'm pedestrian, but no. Mm. On my day with the wind behind my back, maybe. Mm. Yeah, a bit downhill, fired up as well. Coming downhill. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Fired yeah. up. Something like that. But you, you, it just seems to me like when we ask about your best performance, you've re- what you've done is you've said, well, it's performing for the team when you're injured, you know, and pushing through for a win without mentioning any scores. Like, is it? It, it seems that like the the truth is that you are driven by kind of the collective and and the team more than your own performances. Or are you just saying that on air because <laughs> that's the sort of stuff Bradman used to say, and it's oh. not true of athletes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I. I <laughs> Oh, um, <laughs> no, I think like a hundred percent in those circumstances. Like the most euphoric feelings and the most rewarding feelings are the ones where like you achieve something as a group. And um, you often, when, you know, when you do it under pressure or like you know in the last over or on like crazy circumstances, that kind of stuff, they're the ones that you you remember the, the most. Um, so I think yeah, that for sure they're the most rewarding. Um, yeah, don't get me wrong; it's always satisfying as an individual to like 
score some runs or take wickets because I guess cricket's so statistically oriented. But um, yeah, ultimately, I think yeah, you feel more satisfied when you know you've like done everything you can for the team. Um, yeah, because uh. you have <coughs> won every single thing there is to win in cricket, except for the IPL and the hundred, I suppose. Um, but like. What first of all, why are you still playing then? Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, it's like, what is there left to achieve for you in the game? Like, what is 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 legacy part of it? You want to go past, make sure it's wickets. Like, you coming up, to th- you're only like five or ten away from it, aren't you? You're close. You must know exactly how close you are. <laughs> claim not to. Yeah, though. claim not to. I think I think <laughs> it's would. I think it's seven. I think <laughs> I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we asked. <laughs> I wouldn't be going out to dinner with her the night before a game if I was close. <laughs> <laughs> Some dodgy chicken or something. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> yeah, he's competitive. Um, but yeah, like, like, what, what is it that, what is it that drives you to keep playing now? Like, wh- like when we asked uh, your team the other week, when was the last time you guys lost a game? No one seemed to remember. Um, most <laughs> Genuinely. people, mo- most people have lost a club game since they lost a game for Australia. Yeah. So, you guys win a lot. What, what is it? What is it that that drives you now? <laughs> um. I actually just I just love being involved. I love like the whole sort of challenge of, of playing sport um, mm. and like you know trying to get better at something. Um, you know, I suppose trying to perfect a skill that you're never going to p- perfect um, is actually like a really cool challenge just to keep um, yeah keep evolving. And I think just like getting to work with with people that um, it's so enjoyable kind of doing that. Um, you know, like I've played cricket since I was. I think, six or seven and since that time dad's always like throwing me balls in the nets like at, at the local park or um you know we've chatted about pretty much every game we played in and how things went and i love that connection with him and um so i think like that just that challenge of, of keep trying to like improve and, and i guess like contribute to whatever team you're in is awesome and then plus like i think just because the women's game at the moment you know it gets more exciting every year there's something new that happens new development the the game just gets a bit bigger. Like the Com Games this year was pretty awesome, um, and just those kinds of experiences. Like it's pretty easy to to want to come back and mm. and be invo- involved some more. Maybe a little selfish as well, but I just yeah, it's awesome. I I, I know your your dad said at one point if someone's going to make it in sport, they've got to love it, like all of it, um, and that the motivation's got to be intrinsic. And it was with her. He was referring to you. You've been playing cricket for a long time. Now, lots of people know who will be listening or watching this what it's that the toll that cricket can take on you after a long time. Like it, it can become drudgery. Uh, <laughs> like, 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 what is your? Do you still have love for the game, or is it a different kind of relationship? Are you working on it? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like is a labour of love. Like, how, how's how's your how's your relationship to the game at the moment? <laughs> it's a long distance relationship. <laughs> um, no, I, yeah, I mean, like, certainly, like, there's sort of parts of it, like, that pop up. Um, you know, for example, like rain delays on a really cold day or something like that, and you sort of just sitting around waiting. Like, I think those kinds of things, as you get a bit old, older, you get a little bit jaded by. But it almost becomes quite funny because you like you catch yourself how cynical you are about different parts and it, yeah it's like a new form of entertainment in a way um but no I, it, it hasn't got old on me yet I don't I don't think it ever will just because like you know every day is different um every game's different all that kind of stuff but um but yeah I don't know it's a funny game <laughs> it's, it's a, <laughs> and I haven't laughed in years <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Sorry, that was dark. I exactly. drifted off to the abyss for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, what did no. you guys go? You said. Yeah, no. uh, <laughs> can I ask you about, um, you know, this this word like marketability? Um, <laughs> I like it when you say, say no. Yeah. Say no. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I recognise this is a bit of a contradiction because you're actually like, oh, I suppose, doing media right now. But like, do you, how, how do you pro? How do you approach? people or companies like wanting a, a piece of you like it, it, is it it must get exhausting after a while do you do you want to keep any part of yourself to yourself uh, I think I have um yeah oh deep question but I think like you know there's certainly stuff that um you sign up to as like a professional athlete like and a lot of that is sort of focused around your sport and who you are as an athlete and sort of a representative of, of the sport but 
uh, I probably think for all intents and purposes, the rest of my life is is mine and it's quite private and personal and I I don't really owe that to anyone. Um, that's kind of my choice. So I think if you – and that's just how I feel. Like everyone's really different around that. But I think it's easy to kind of have some really strong – I guess, morals around that and then, you know, you can kind of work around those parameters um, or whatever you feel comfortable with, I guess. Some time ago you were listed as the 36th most marketable athlete in the world. Top 36, that's big. (laughs) I don't know. In the top 30,000 maybe now. Okay, so you do keep tabs on that. (laughs) It's dropped a bit. (laughs) It was in the world and and, and it went on to say, like, I don't know what's in your stable right now, but it says, you know, Adidas, Fox Sports, Commonwealth Bank, Hublot in the stable. Um, Nice. So where does you... thoroughbreds. (laughs) There are. A couple of thoroughbreds, yeah. It sort of makes me wonder, like, where where does you doing this, you know, like TGC fit into the image, you know? Like, is this sort of... Would you like to be a part of my stable? Well, well, you know, like, obviously when I I was texting you about this, you had to go to your agent. It's a charity gig. This is... Are you throwing a few crumbs to the grassroots here for the image? Um, (laughs) I don't get out of bed for less than 100K. Yeah. 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 Charity work. It's charity. Yeah. I'll throw us one. <laughs> a couple of crumbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, like, if you went further than a kilometre up the road, I wouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? Um, uh, no, trainee. Travel day, travel day. Yeah. So? Um, Is that really what they call it, a stable? Uh, well, someone someone did. Someone yeah. did. There's uh, some really lovely interviews of you out, out there. But, uh, yeah, it was the, the, the term was in the stable. How long have you been with Adidas for? Oh, a long time. Um Fourteen years, maybe. Yeah, yeah. You must have worked with some, like, other legends in that time. Um, a couple of really cool shoots. Yeah. Overseas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Give I some actually, names, name drop. Well, mm. to be honest with you, um, a lot of those shoots, like when they're sort of piecing together an ad or something, you kind of go in and yeah, it's just you and then yeah. Um, but I think David Beckham was in the same ad. Oh, at I've one heard of him. You think yeah. it, well, he was? Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think. I think yeah. yeah. yeah DB. Yeah, that's cool. Any stuff with Fedra? Just he's in the news recently. Uh, I feel like he might be Nike. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a test. <laughs> oh, actually, what? No, you now. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, to answer that question. Uh, okay. I don't know why I'm so yeah. interested in that. But <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> There's a beautiful interview um, of you in the Cricket Monthly in 2017 by Maggie McKellar. <laughs> and it opens by saying... Imagine for a moment the mounting yard before a famous horse race, the Melbourne Cup perhaps, or the Kentucky <laughs> Derby. <theme> here. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of horse stuff, yeah. The yard is filled with horses. <laughs> All of them superb equine athletes, coats like satin, muscles defined, tuned to the minute to run their fastest. Tension hums. But there is one horse who looks relaxed, easy in its body, graceful, so confident it has the composure to look around at the other horses, Take in the crowd and all the while it moves like shaken silk. This horse will win the race. It's a scene that flashes through my mind the first time I meet Australian cricket and football superstar Elise Perry. Now, I'm not going to compare you to a horse. It's too late. <laughs> he left out that I'm a bit long in the tooth though. <laughs> <laughs> she, she. It was, it, I, I think I was no way, there's no way I was going to do that. But, but I actually think that forgetting the horse analogy, if that's possible, you do come across this way, like like um, graceful and composed, and uh, like Bawley said, poised. I don't know if you're able to answer this, but like, is that a value of yours? Like, do you, do you work on that? You know, a lot of people talk about you under pressure, and you, you know, you prepare for pressure, and you you do always look very relaxed or very uh, you know composed. Is that is that something you project outwards, or you just naturally have you always been that way? Um. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't Sounds like so. probably natural. Um, yeah, it depends what no, But you know, like, <laughs> oh, okay, I'll put it this way. I, I guess I am asking a serious question, but I opened it with a description of a horse. But, like, <laughs> if you do, like, I don't know, you have it's this as well. Honey time. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're asking? Can I do a horse noise? <laughs> I didn't see this. I didn't see this question going this way. I didn't see it going. I didn't see it going this way. Oh, I just thought it was a lovely open up. But, um, oh, fuck. Oh, okay. Well, he goes to, like to you. Like okay, if you're doing a, uh, you're gonna, yeah, I can answer this stupidly. I'm not gonna ask you actually. But like, 
<sighs> if you're doing a pub, like a speech in public or something, it's one like you may feel nervous, very nervous on the inside, but you have the capacity to appear outwardly very relaxed. You know, like what's do, do you have that experience a lot where like how somebody might see you on the outside is not actually what's going on? <laughs> um, maybe maybe in sport I do, I think. Like being on the on the field, I kind of, yeah, I, I feel, it's probably where I'm, I like feel the most comfortable and, and kind of, um, yeah, um, just kind of naturally like assured of myself. Um, cool. Like because if I was public speaking, my voice would go shaky and I'd be, really scared and come across like very obvious that I've got no poise but I think just for whatever reason being on a field and yeah kind of having that that sort of assurance in in myself a little bit Mm. maybe um it always feels like that for you when you when you're playing sport I'm sure you go through nerves and stuff like that but like given you can compare it to other areas of your life you obviously have a uh sort of something inside of you that that fires up for sport at even at the highest level you're like you just back yourself and you're good to go um yeah maybe maybe on some deep level and i think it's combined probably, with hard work obviously well i think that's kind of what gives you right that, that um yeah that kind of assertiveness is that like if you've been able to prepare the way you want to and and done a lot of a lot of hard work i guess behind the scenes it's really easy to step on and and kind of do something and know that like whatever kind of happens, you'll have some kind of answer for it. Um, I think that's how I, I feel about it anyway. It um, doesn't mean it goes, it'll go your way or you'll, you'll do well, but I think it just gives you the confidence to have a go at least. I'm not gonna, I was going to say something about a horse, but I'm not going. <laughs> 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 just finally, uh, there's a number of female athletes in Australia who are just really good at multi-sport, but I sort of, I want to know where you, or whether you care about the fact that you're good at many sports. So I'm just going to say, Ash Barty, Meg Lanning, Aaron Phillips, Taylor Harris, Yana Pittman, athletics and bobsleigh, sporting decathlon against each other. Are you backing yourself? Ooh. Do you know who I'd add to that list? Sally Fitzgibbons. Okay. Yes. So okay. Far. Yep. Um, yeah. Add anyone else you like, and, and then tell me. Yeah. Uh, I would. I would back Sally in a decathlon. Really. Um, I sort of grew up playing a bit of sport with Sal and, like, phenomenal runner. But hair and eye coordination, amazing. Um, can throw, sort of kick. Not that there's kicking in a decathlon, but I reckon. There probably would be in something like a, the Decathlon hasn't been decided yet. Oh, right, what we're it is. not talking about <coughs> an actual decathlon. No, uh, no, no, I want to I throw. Yeah, okay. that's that's a fair question. Yeah. I said decathlon and you presumed I meant a decathlon. But no, like a broader sporting yeah. decathlon. We're, de- we're, we're sort of tackling. Like a longest the, kick involved yeah, in that kick, kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 some yeah. hand-eye yeah. stuff, maybe yeah. some running stuff. I reckon Sally Fitzgibbons would, would be very good at that. Yeah. Yeah, she's sort of got the water thing covered. Really good with soccer ball, played touch footy as well, and then like serious runner. So, and what's Ash Barty's weaknesses? Is just sort of out, outside <laughs> off. <with> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> you know I mean? She could never how, make it. How do you bowl her? How do you bowl her, Ash? Give her a short one. Yeah, bumper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shorten her up. Yeah, yeah. elbow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she's faced Serena at the other end, but <laughs> our bumpers will yeah. get her going. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um. Just last one from me, uh, obviously Meg is taking a break, Meg Lanning that is, for those playing at home, um, taking a break indefinitely. Uh, I presume people are still talking to her. <laughs> um, <laughs> how, how's she doing, do you know? I think she's she's doing pretty well, obviously. like All the girls are incredibly supportive of Meg. Um, you know, and just I think she's just been such an incredible kind of servant to the game for yeah. so long. And um, Yeah, it's kind of like, gosh, if anyone deserves a break, she does. And um, I think, yeah, I think... For, She's going really well and sort of finding some some cool things to do outside of cricket, which she hasn't had a chance to do in um, you know forever. So um, yeah, I think she's she's going pretty well. But um, yeah, everyone's kind of just there for her when she needs. But mm. I think she's um, yeah she's enjoying the break as well. <coughs> Elise, um, <laughs> despite the the hijinks and silly moments in this <laughs> conversation, um, it is it's a genuine privilege for us to to be sat here with you and i think a, like a little time piece for us as well to look back on with some pride i can't look you in the eyes when i say that well uh, <laughs> i just from, from what I, moment? <laughs> I thought there's some there's some moments i hope make it to air um, so <laughs> we'll see. um 
But um, no, we, we, like uh, you, you, to, to those listening and watching, um, this this is that sometimes when you get the opportunity to speak to legends, it's usually through some kind of like a corporate intermediary or there's something else attached to it that uh, where someone's making money off something or whatever. And it's so actually is a real point of like uh, pride and an honour for us that this is just a chat that has happened. You just said, yes, you'll come along. So That's because um, I was skating past the apartment and someone <laughs> pulled me in here. <laughs> 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 but sure, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> just a small moment of earnestness, but uh, you know, now, now, now we've kidnapped you. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, anyway, we've kidnapped you, uh, and um, I'm, no, I'm it's glad. Been good for my brand, guys. Yeah. So thanks. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks. I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. It's been a lot of fun. It's been really good to chat.